I'll present uh, this talk uh, uh, mostly on behalf of Alexander Popov, who is a doctor in uh, flow cytometry and uh, on immunophenotyping, but uh, I, I was also uh, quite deeply involved in this work, so I'm a little bit familiar with this. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, it's not necessary to, to say once more time why uh, detection of uh, bone marrow disease is necessary for uh, uh, for clinical evaluation of patients with neuroblastoma, and uh, there are different ways to to find out the uh, bone marrow lesion, bone marrow disease, and the uh, routinely used uh, method is conventional uh, cytomorphology, uh, which has a very limited uh, analytical sensitivity, and uh, the, uh, this uh, issue makes us to go forward to find out uh, more sensitive techniques for the uh, investigation of bone marrow involvement. Among these um, highly sensitive techniques, uh, immunocytology, uh, uh, molecular-based, both uh, RNA and DNA-based, and the flow cytometry could be distinguished. Uh, so, uh, flow cytometry is not really a uh, no, uh, very popular technique for uh, neuroblastoma cell, uh, cell monitoring, uh, detection monitoring uh, in, in patients with neuroblastoma. There were uh, some uh, publications on this topic, but uh, when uh, molecular techniques were introduced, uh, the scientific community switched mostly to a highly sensitive and disease specific uh, molecular techniques and uh, flow cytometry was a little bit uh, forgotten. Nevertheless, uh, in here, uh, 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 antibody panel for uh, gating uh, uh, tumor cells in bone marrow is uh, demonstrated. Sensitivity of uh, flow cytometry is not uh, so big as uh, sensitivity of molecular technique, and uh, it's only uh, one, uh, uh, one on uh, minus four uh, log power. And uh, uh, basing on literature data and basing on our data, it uh, has quite good Good correlation between immunocytology and RQPCR data, but uh, not 100%. And I will show you the results. It's uh, quite fast, relatively cheap, and less labels. For example, comparing to the molecular techniques. Uh, and uh, some previous studies demonstrated the prognostic value for stage four patients with neuroblastoma. However. Uh, as I told you uh, previously, it's less sensitive comparing to molecular techniques and probably immunocy immunocytology. And uh, one probably uh, of the main disadvantages, it's not disease specific. So if uh, we can, uh, uh, we see uh, FOX to be expression uh, in the mm, uh, bone marrow of patients with some cancer, we can uh, say with, uh, mm, uh, with high, uh, to, to be almost sure that uh, uh, the tumor is neuroblastoma, but uh, this uh, immuno immunophenotype is not specific for neuroblastoma. So uh, sometimes it's uh, it's not easy to distinguish CD45 uh, negative tumor cells from uh, debris. However, uh, it could be solved using DNA uh, tropped uh, dyes, and uh, sometimes. Uh, uh, tumor cells show uh, uh, down regulation of antigen uh, expression, so that's why we can uh, also focus on molecular techniques where uh, these uh, differences in expressions are not so uh, huge. So, uh, speaking about this uh, study, it's a retrospective cohort study, which included 51 uh, patients uh, that were treated in uh, pediatric oncology center in Yekaterinburg, and the stage distribution as well as uh, distribution uh, on MECAN status is uh, presented uh, on this slide. And uh, for almost for every the patients, uh, the bone marrow puncture was done from uh, different uh, sites. The medium is three, but sometimes uh, for some patients, uh, 
uh, we have only one available sample. So uh, uh, initially, uh, bone marrow samples were studied using conventional cytology. After that, uh, a flow cytometry approach was applied. Uh, also, uh, the, uh, the same uh, the same samples were analyzed for Fox to be and uh, TH expression. And of course, uh, uh, patients considered as positive if uh, either one uh, side of bone marrow puncture was positive. Uh, this slide represents uh, the examples of uh, negative. Uh, uh, Bone marrow samples for uh, bone marrow sample for tumor cells uh, positive on minimal residual uh, disease level and highly positive uh, bone marrow samples. You can see uh, highly positive tumor cells for CD56, and negative for CD45, and uh, positivity of tumor cells for CD90 uh, for CD81 and G2. Uh, so, uh, all uh, these patients were treated or observed uh, according to German uh, NB2004 protocol and uh, distribution uh, based on risk group. Uh, groups are presented on, on this slide. Median follow-up time achieved uh, all, uh, six years and we calculate event-free survival and uh, cumulative incidence of relapse or progression to estimate the outcome of these patients. So, uh, uh, almost in uh, half uh, of our cohort, uh, flow cytometry revealed the bone marrow involvement, and uh, only in 13 of, uh, of these patients, uh, bone marrow disease was confirmed by conventional cytomorphology. And of course, these discrepancies was uh, uh, caused by uh, inequalities of analytical sensitivity of uh, the techniques. And the differences in uh, survival rates are presented uh, on uh, this and following slides. Uh, and here you can see uh, the uh, event for survival and uh, cumulative incidence of relapse differences uh, in the entire cohort of patients uh, harboring uh, bone marrow disease based on flow cytometry and uh, 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 having clear uh, bone marrow and at the time of primary diagnosis. In here, uh, you can see distributions, uh, distribution of patients uh, with McCann, uh, single uh, uh, single copy patients. Also, uh, uh, differences in event-free survival and cumulative incidence of relapse retained the same situation in patients with uh, cytologically intact bone marrow. Uh, interestingly and uh, very uh, useful information that uh, patients that were uh, considered as uh, stages 1 to 3 uh, based on conventional uh, 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 stratification and uh, staging criteria uh, uh, among these patients, those who harbored bone marrow involvement based on flow cytometry demonstrated uh, a high rate of uh, uh, adverse events and uh, recurrences. The same in stage four patients. Uh, also, uh, such uh, discrepancies uh, in uh, survival rates were observed in uh, high risk uh, patients and uh, observation and intermediate risk group patients. Uh, after that, we performed a multivariate analysis to, to find out the most uh, relevant uh, adverse prognostic factors. And uh, we create two models. First model includes uh, such covariates uh, as bone marrow measured by flow cytometry, uh, stage, uh, age at uh, diagnosis, and mechan amplification. And uh, on this model, only uh, positivity of bone marrow by flow cytometry and the mechan uh, amplification demonstrated uh, uh, demonstrated as uh, independent prognostic factors. Because stage, age, and uh, mechan 
status uh, are uh, the criteria of a conventional uh, stratification system, uh, we create a second model where we com uh, compared bone marrow positivity based on flow cytometry uh, against uh, uh, NB204 uh, risk group uh, high again. Uh, against the observation and intermediate. And so that both uh, bone marrow positivity for flow by flow cytometry and uh, NB20 or forest group uh, retains prog uh, retain prognostic significance. Uh, also, uh, we uh, studied this uh, 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 samples in parallel with the uh, uh, Molecular panel of four markers. We used FOX to be and TH expression, and previously demonstrated that uh, uh, positivity of bone marrow uh, at the time of initial diagnostics for FOX to be uh, and or TH expression correlates with unfavorable outcome. And uh, in here, uh, interestingly, that. Uh, uh, there were no 100% uh, concordance between uh, molecular data, expression of FOX2B and TA genes, and flow cytometry, and we saw some discrepant uh, cases on both both sides, uh, flow positive, uh, PCR negative, and uh, vice versa, uh, flow negative. Uh, PCR positive, and uh, we were really surprised when we uh, analyzed the event free survival in the uh, in, uh, in cohorts uh, 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 separated based on FOX to be OTH expression, and in both uh, uh, molecular positive and molecular negative uh, uh, patients, uh, flow cytometry. Uh, allows to get uh, nice results in, uh, uh, in differences of uh, event free survival and cumulative incidence of relapse. Uh, and uh, I will skip uh, the conclusions uh, and uh, thanks all collaborators and thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. If there are any questions, I will happy. Uh, or, or continue the discussion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have questions for Alexandra and uh, for all my colleagues who deal with MRD probably. Uh, the first one. Uh, in your model, uh, we had some experience with the flow cytometry and we tried to compose um, a similar model, but we did include their MIBG response and some signs of and response by CT. And in this multivariate model, the flow cytometry did not work in uh, multivariate analysis. Did you try to include uh, some other markers for response? Hmm. Uh, it's an uh, interesting question. So, uh, no. uh, uh, I uh, have only uh, uh, things, so just uh, it's like a uh, uh, speculation probably in that case, uh, because uh, su such markers, uh, of course, could be, and probably your cohort uh, will be uh, quite nice, uh, will be separated by molecular markers, probably. Uh, uh, of course, uh, speaking about this cohort, it's, it's quite limited. It's only uh, 51 uh, patients. So, uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, we were able to get uh, statistically significant results. So, uh, and of course, this data should be validated perspective. Uh, probably the, uh, maybe the uh, uh, better way is uh, uh, to, to get together to, to, to pull together this data and to find out uh, will uh, this uh, inequalities, discrepancies in uh, prognosis will retained or not, or uh, if we will uh, get some uh, uh, probably. Well, perhaps uh, in prospective study could be great. Yes, yeah, sure. And another one, when we it's time to harvest uh, autologous cells, 
is there a situation in which you see some uh, level of MRD and you say, no, we do not have it now, we deform some Mokima. What is the level of MRD? Will you look at MRD when you think where to have risk or not? Uh, you mean uh, at the time of bone marrow harvesting prior to autologous stem cell yeah. transplantation? So, uh, the situation uh, we saw previously that uh, uh, MRD positivity prior to uh, stem cells uh, transplantation or, uh, seems to be absolutely fatal situation uh, with uh, almost uh, zero or uh, near the zero uh, percent of survival. But I was uh, a little bit surprised when we discussed with, uh, yesterday the uh, presentation uh, with Barbara that there are some uh, patients that uh, uh, which have uh, bone marrow positivity prior to stem cell transplantation and they survive and liver also demonstrate uh, uh, such curves that uh, survival rates of these patients are not, uh, are not zero. It's, 20%, 15%, but uh, they, uh, among these patients, there are long-term survivors. Uh, I don't know uh, uh, the explanation, and of course the explanation could be a kind of uh, speculation, because uh, it could be interesting to, uh, to uh, to isolate these cells, and uh, for now we have such techniques, and to uh, to analyze why uh, uh, some persisting cells uh, are. Of course, we know that uh, persisting cells are chemoresistant cells, but why some cells uh, after the completion of uh, treatment will uh, grow and kill patients? and uh, some are indolent and they persist for, for many times. So I think it's a uh, subject of a very deep and fundamental uh, investigation. And on, uh, on the practical field, as a doctor, um, we, we try to harvest the stem cells when the bone marrow is cleared of tumor. Uh, but we, we do that with cytology yet, because that's the state of the art, and we know that with PCR it's, it's not there. We studied the question, if you would reinfuse um, a harvest that are PCR positive or negative, does that correlate with outcome? Esther van Weser published that data, um, and we saw that the harvest itself, if it's contaminated, yes or no, it does not correlate with outcome. But if the bone marrow at time of harvest is really still positive, quite positive, then you have a poor outcome because, because these are the poor responders. I know this, but would in my patients I still not do the harvest and not do the autologous stem cell transplantation? I would say yes, because it's not 100%, 0%. So I would harvest when the bone marrow is as clear as possible of the disease. And then I would go for the high dose chemotherapy because it does cure some of the pH patients. And what's the highest possible tumor cell contents uh, based on flocytometry data? Which <coughs> yeah. 0.5%, 1%, uh, well, maybe form PVC. Yeah, well, this is a really good question. When we were in the INRG committee internationally making new standards and new ways of how to uh, grade responses for the bone marrow working group, we have been, I think we have been discussing like for five years, which cutoff should we need, um, which percentage. And the table that, that's the cancer paper, the, pa the table that came out is like completely zero to 20 percent, between zero and 20 percent, you still do not know if it's progression or not. So um, it's very difficult to make a cutoff. So I would say everything uh, uh, less than 10 percent or less than 5 percent would be okay, because we know that it can, it can depend on the moment you take the sample. If you pull a bit harder, you can have the clump in there. So it's really, really difficult to make a real cutoff, a clinical relevant cutoff there. So, so uh, there is one, uh, I'll say, very easily established cutoff level. It's zero be because uh, uh, negative, zero uh, negative zero, uh, patients yeah. are uh, yeah. much, much better. And uh, it's uh, very difficult or maybe almost impossible to establish any cutoff among positive uh, But clinically, if you would go below, uh, zero, below 1% with flow, I would agree with that. Yeah. We also did that, uh, the 1%. And 
but also patients with MRD are um, patients with many high risk features, so um, they are probably non responding due to. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, thank you so much again for the uh, coming for the session and for listening, and thanks for all the speakers, and uh, goodbye. Thank you. Yeah.